they're not only going to talk about soccer, they're going to yes. demonstrate. Yes. But they said they would not kick the, the balls through the windows. Or the television. Or the television. Or the television. Or the television. Okay, so without further ado, we have an Olympian who has graciously uh, accepted our invitation. And, uh, <laughs> and he's, he's, uh, I think he brought his gold medal with him. But, uh, <laughs> he travels with it to North Dakota. Or at least his reading glasses. <laughs> Ladies Yay. and gentlemen. It is an honor to be at this uh, uh, impressive uh, gathering, and I thank you very much. Now, I'd like to give you a certain different aspects of the fencing career that I experienced. And the first thing is, in every sport, you have to learn some basic things to do. For example, in soccer, uh, James. What is one of the basic things you have to learn when you start soccer? Zach. Not even use your hands. What? How to use your? I said that you're not able to use. Your hands. That's exactly right because we're only used to throw. Only goalies can use it in the box. What? Only goalies can use it. Right. Uh, and another basic thing would be, for example, Zach. Hmm? Shooting. Shooting or dribbling. So there are certain things. In fencing, the, the initial uh, position is called an on-guard position, okay? And later today, you can try that. <laughs> now, the hard part of this is not the arms, all right? This, is, this holds a weapon and so on, and this balances you. But the hard part is the leg because if any of you care to take this position and hold it for two minutes, three minutes, five, you can't. So that you learn and you, and you move whoop, backwards. I used to do this better. <laughs> <laughs> and forwards and backwards and forwards. And, and all we did the first day was learn that. And then to attack, you lunge, which goes like that, okay? After two or three days of that, when I first learned, I could not walk up steps. <laughs> I was so sore in my legs. But after another two, three, four days of doing it, you get used to it. And after two weeks, it's automatic. So you learn things like that. And the next thing you learn is the hand. How do you attack in different ways? And how do you defend in certain ways? So Zach, would you call, give me your one of your hands? Fine, you're attacking me. I can do that and push you to one side, or I can do this and push you to the other side. With, with, with your with your weapon. with your weapon. Yeah, he has a weapon. I have a weapon, but okay. we don't have them here. Or I can do that. So you learn all those things. So that is some basics on fencing. Now, for me. The first year of college is when I first took up fencing. And we had a freshman team. We had a first year team. And we fenced other schools. And that was fine. I was pretty sure I would not make the varsity team, the, the major team, because there were three, four, five guys who were ahead of me. But as luck would have it, two of them dropped out for different reasons. And I got to travel with the team and fence as one of the starters. Uh, so fast forward to my third year in college, and I was at the National uh, Collegiate Athletic <laughs> Fencing Competition. There were 28 FA fencers from different colleges, and I lost three bouts and I won 25 bouts, oh, and I won that championship. Yay. Yay. Um, now, what year was this? This was the year 1957. Oh, that was only a couple years ago. A couple years ago, <laughs> a couple years ago. I think, I think uh, Sean may not remember, but Ella probably remembers 1957. 
<laughs> that was about 20 years, uh, 57 was 20 years before Uncle Jesse was born and 22 years before Aunt Emily was born. I don't remember that I wasn't born. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember when I wasn't born. So the next thing I want to tell you about is in those days, fencing, the, the superior fencing was after you left college. Because in those days, kids didn't start at six years old or five years old. They started when they got to college for most fencers. In this country. In this country. Uh, in other countries, they were already starting as kids, which is what you're doing now in soccer, right? Right. Uh, so uh, anyway, the, my next step was the out-of-college competition, which was much harder much more experienced mm -hmm. fencers. Because these were fencers in their 20s and 30s, they have been fencing a long time, they had fenced internationally, none of which I had done. And I managed to make the finals of six of those nationals in a row, and I was second, I was third, I was fourth, I was sixth. Uh, thankfully it went the other way. I was sixth, I was fourth, I was third, I was second. Um, and I got to be on the Olympic team because the, that was from that group they fenced, they chose the Olympic team. So switch to the 1960 Olympics. Wow. Okay. And uh, it was in Rome and we went to it. And when you guys watch the Olympics on uh, television, it's very, uh, it's very exciting. And also there's a lot about who's doing well, who's not doing well. My experience at the Olympics was very different, as was, I think, every mm -hmm. athlete there. You're only concerned with your own training. Are you sleeping enough? Are you training enough? Are you training too much? How are you doing? And all of the flag waving and stuff is very nice, but I will tell you one flag waving story and then I'll be done. And in the Olympics, by the way, I did not excel because the fencing level in the United States was not up to the mm -hmm. world level mm -hmm. where France and Hungary and Italy and the Soviet Union, which included Russia, these were the mm -hmm. premier uh, fencing powers. And the U.S. was down here. But now we're up there. Now we win gold medals. Now we win uh, championships and so on. Anyway, one Olympic uh, experience, which was not competing at all, it was marching in, okay? It was a very hot day in August in Rome. And we were lined up, told to, to be in order, like three or four of us together, and then another row and another row. Very, very military, very strict. Into the Coliseum? And we, it wasn't the Coliseum. And we walked into the stadium after at least an hour of being too hot waiting. We walk into the stadium and we walk through this dark tunnel out into the stadium. And there's 80,000 people cheering as one team after another comes out. But in walking into the center, and some of you may have seen this in past yeah. Olympics, um, and where there, there's the lighting of the torch and the, all the teams are in the center of the field. Uh, and walking in, we noticed that the Soviets, which were considered our enemy at that time, they were waving their caps and they were, and they were getting big cheers. And we were told to just walk straight, and we wore hats in those days too. This is 1960, okay? And while we're... What? He says hippies. Not, I said no, not hippies. Not, not hippies. <laughs> Definitely not hippies. And then when we're in the center and we're waiting and things are happening, the birds are flying and the torch is lit, then some of us got together and said, wait a minute, on the way out, let's wave our hats. Let's, you know, do what the Soviets did. So we did. And then we threw our hats into the crowd and they went wild. And then we left and then we fenced. 
Thank you, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. 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 Yeah.